Have you ever had the frustrating experience of feeling confident in your knowledge, only to realize during an exam or job interview that you don't actually know as much as you thought? It can be disheartening and embarrassing. But fear not, because today I want to introduce you to the wisdom of physicist Richard Feynman, which can help you avoid these situations in the future. In the past, my preparation for exams or interviews consisted of cramming as much information as possible in the days and hours leading up to the test. I would memorize facts and figures, thinking that I was adequately prepared. However, I soon realized that this kind of shallow knowledge is only surface deep and lacks true understanding. Richard Feynman understood the difference between shallow and deep knowledge from a young age. He recalled a story from his childhood when another boy asked him the name of a bird. Feynman didn't know, but the boy claimed superiority because he knew it was a brown-throated thrush, Fay. Why Enmont's father had actually taught him the names of birds in multiple languages, but he explained that knowing the name of something doesn't equate to knowing it, so how do we acquire deep knowledge and understanding? Enter the Feynman technique. This mental model involves a simple but powerful four-step process that Feynman himself used as a method of study at Princeton University. Step one is to write down the name of the subject you want to study at the top of a piece of paper. This acts as a focal P point for your learning. Step two is to write down your explanation of the subject in simple terms, as if you were teaching it to a child who knows nothing about it. This forces you to use clear and concise language, devoid of jargon, to ensure a comprehensive understanding. Step three is to identify the gaps in your understanding. As you explain the subject, you may notice areas where you struggle to simplify or where you start to ramble. These are the areas that require further study and attention. And step four is to repeat steps one to three until you have mastery over the subject. By continually revisiting and refining your explanations, you solidify your knowledge and bridge any remaining gaps. But why does the Feynman technique work so effectively? One reason is that teaching is a mutually beneficial process. By explaining a concept to someone else, even if it's just on paper, you enhance your own understanding and retention of the knowledge. You can apply the Feynman technique to any topi. See your learning, whether it's for exams, work, or personal interest, it quickly reveals whether you truly understand a concept or are just regurgitating memorized information. If you can explain a subject using analogies and simple language that even a five-year-old can understand, it's a strong indicator of deep understanding. Before we wrap up, I want to give a special shout-out to our sponsor, Skillshare. If you're interested in evidence-based learning techniques like the Feynman method, Skillshare offers a range of classes on effective studying and learning. One class one personally found beneficial is how to study for exams, an evidence-based masterclass by Ali Abdal, which delves into the secrets of efficient studying. But Skillshare isn't just limited to studying, they have classes on productivity, illustration, creative writing, and more. As a lifelong learner myself, I appreciate that there are no ads on Skillshare, and new premium classes are constantly being added. And here's the exciting part. The first 1,000 subscribers who click the link in the description will receive a two-month free trial of Skillshare's premium membership. That means you can dive into all the classes and explore your creativity without spending a dime. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring this video and supporting our channel. So my friend, if you're tired of surface-level knowledge and want to truly understand and master the subjects you're studying, try implementing the Feynman technique. It's a simple yet p powerful tool that will enhance your learning journey. And remember, the name of something is just the tip of the iceberg. True knowledge lies in understanding it at a deeper level. Now, I want to hear from you. What actions are you going to take from this video to improve your learning and understanding? Let me know in the comments below. And if you found this video valuable and it made a positive impact in your life, consider giving a tip proportional to the value you received. The link can be fo wound in the description. Your support helps us continue creating content that adds value to your life. Thank you for watching, and until next time, keep learning and growing. In the early 1920s, a struggling writer faced a blank page and a lack of inspiration. Sitting in front of a fireplace, he squeezed the peels of small oranges into the flame, hoping for a spark of creativity. Looking out over the rooftops of Paris, he assured himself that he had written before and would write again. We often hear about the state of flow, where our imagination guides us effortlessly and our focus remains unwavering. Athletes have pre-game rituals and creatives have morning routines to propel them into highly productive days. But the real challenge lies in getting into that flow state in the first place. Ernest Hemingway, the young writer in our story, 
understood that it wasn't about how he started his day, but rather how he ended the day before. He knew the importance of not emptying the well of his writing completely, but instead leaving something in it and allowing it to refill overnight from the springs that fed it. Imagine being stuck at your desk, hours passing by with no inspiration in sight, and then suddenly it clicks. The right words, the perfect design, everything falls into place. Time seems to fly and you become one with your work. This is the land of flow, but what do we do when we reach this magical state? Most of us tend to squeeze every last drop of it, working until we're completely drained. We believe that leaving anything on the table is a sin of high performance, but we fail to realize the consequences. Josh Waitzkin, a chess prodigy, once had a conversation with skiing legend Billy Kidd. Kidd revealed that the three most important turns on a ski run are the last three before getting on the lift. Those moments when the slope levels off and there's less challenge are crucial for perfecting your technique. If those last three turns are precise, you internalize that precision on the lift ride up. The same principle applies to flow. When we walk away from our work completely drained, we internalize those feelings, the brain drain we experience. NCE after an all-nighter lingers, hindering our productivity the next day. It's like the bitter gambler who blames their losses on the final hand, while the smart gambler walks away with their winnings intact, Hemingway understood the importance of walking away from his work while still feeling energized and inspired. He didn't see it as a sign of weakness, but rather as a smart strategy to ensure a fresh start the next day. He always stopped when he knew what would happen next, giving himself a clear. Our direction to continue, unfortunately, our society still glamorizes the grind and celebrates those who can endure the most pressure and work the longest. But true discipline lies in knowing when to walk away before we're completely cooked. It takes Hemingway-like confidence to say, we've worked enough today. I'll see you again tomorrow. So, as you strive to find your flow today, ask yourself if you have the discipline to walk away before it's all gone. Can you resist the temptation to push yourself to the breaking point and instead leave with fuel still in the tank? Remember, it's not about how long you work, but about working smart and allowing yourself the opportunity to recharge. Thank you for watching this video. If you found it valuable, please consider giving a tip proportional to the value you received. The link can be found in the description below. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and turn on the notification bell to never miss an update. Now tell us, in the comments what actions you are going to implement in your life after watching this video. Stay tuned for more insightful content, and until next time, keep chasing your flow. What are cognitive biases? A cognitive bias is a systematic error in thinking, a mental shortcut that our brains use to make quick decisions or judgments. These biases exist because our brains need to process a large amount of information while conserving thinking energy. Cognitive biases can be thought of as filters through which objective information flows and is transformed. Why do cognitive biases exist? Our brains rely on heuristics or rules of thumb to make decisions quickly and efficient. L. Why? These biases come into play when we are emotional, rushed, or feel social pressure to make a choice. However, Cognitive biases can also affect our everyday thinking and decision-making. In this video, I will outline 10 common cognitive biases and provide ways to avoid them in your everyday thinking. So let's dive in. Point 1. Self-serving bias. This bias involves protecting our ego and self-esteem by cherry-picking feedback that supports our high opinion of ourselves while overlooking our faults and FAI. Lures. To avoid this bias, ask yourself if you have been ignoring feedback that doesn't align with your self-perception. Point 2. FOMO fear of missing out this bias is triggered by social anxiety and the fear of being left out of exciting or interesting events. It often arises from seeing posts on social media where it seems like everyone else is having fun without you. To avoid this bias, question whether your actions are driven by genuine desire or the fear of missing out. Point 3 gambler's fallacy this bias leads people to believe that a random event is less likely to occur again in the future if it has occurred frequently in the past to avoid this bias ask yourself if the current event is truly dependent on past outcomes and whether you would make the same choice if you didn't know the past performance point four actor observer bias this bias involves attributing our own failures to external factors while attributing others failures to internal causes to avoid this bias, reflect on whether you are making assumptions about others' failings while being lenient with your own. Point 5. Narrative bias This bias is our brain's tendency to make sense of the world through storytelling. It creates a narrative that links different pieces of information, often ignoring facts that don't fit the story. To avoid this bias, question the story you are telling yourself. 
and consider if there is any evidence that contradicts it. Point six, survivorship bias. This bias occurs when we focus only on successful projects or people and OV. Or look those that failed when analyzing what led to success. To avoid this bias, be mindful of considering both success and failure and identify common factors or choices in both. Point seven, anchoring this bias occurs when we use the first piece of information we encounter as a reference point to judge subsequent information. To avoid this bias, consider the context in which you encountered the information and whether there is an attempt to anchor your judgment against something more expensive or favor a BLE.8 Halo effect This bias leads us to let one positive trait influence our overall opinion of a person, product, or experience. To avoid this bias, question what specifically you like about something and imagine it without that trait. Interrogate your feelings about the subject.9 Hyperbolic discounting this bias involves valuing immediate rewards over long-term ones, often leading us to prioritize short-term comfort over long-term goals. To avoid this bias, reflect on what tends to win in your mind immediate gratification or long-term benefits. Picture yourself in the future and evaluate the impact of your decisions.10. Planning fallacy this bias leads us to underestimate the time it will take to complete a task in the future. To avoid this bias, Consider past experiences and account for potential delays and setbacks when planning awareness of cognitive biases is the first step in mitigating their impact on your thinking. Stay vigilant, pay attention to your decision-making process, and de-question yourself regularly. Combating cognitive biases requires an ongoing effort to ensure your thinking remains objective and unbiased. If you found this video valuable, consider subscribing to our channel, liking the video, and hitting the notification bell to stay updated with our latest content. By subscribing, you'll gain access to more insightful videos like this one and learn how to improve your decision-making skills. Thank you for watching and remember, self-awareness is the key to avoid ding cognitive biases and making better choices in life.